Good morning, Libra. Okay, got quite a bit of stuff for you already here. Um, it's really been nice for me actually to be in my own energy over the weekend because I'm doing the the readings at slightly different times. I'm actually doing Libra's reading on Sunday evening. Um, so I've had all of Saturday and the the morning here. Well, it's not evening yet actually. What time is it? Is it oh my god, it was just eleven eleven. It's eleven twelve. Um, so I started the reading at eleven eleven totally not on purpose didn't even know what time it was and your card libra just to show you is the number 11 the justice card uh so okay yeah there's absolutely something going on here today i'm excited i'm scared um maybe that's how you're feeling um so i've totally lost track of what i was saying there yeah i've been in my own energy um all weekend which has been really good uh except for when other energies come in and interfere which is not quite so good but i feel like I'm in that Libra energy. So we've got like the Justice card here, which is the typical Libra card of the tarot. I've got the, I also felt like I needed to pull out the Queen of Swords and the Empress, which are other cards that can represent Libra in the tarot. And you can see here that the, they've got the, on two of these cards, they've got, they've got the swords pointing up. Uh, this indicates either you are ready to take action or you're ready to communicate something. They've also kind of got a hand up on both of these images as well. So it's like, I I don't know. It's like maybe you're 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 welcoming communication. You're open to, to receiving communication. Um, it, it's like you expect people to be honest. You expect people to communicate honestly with you. But there's also a sense of like being a little bit guarded. That that empress there, she almost has like a shield on the ground. Um, so it's like being in very high vibrational energy, letting people come to you, letting people speak to you, letting people communicate to you. The justice card comes in with this element of judgment, but I don't feel like it's like harsh judgment. It's like weighing up what this person said. It's almost like Anubis. I'm really getting, is it Anubis? Uh, the, um, the, the Egyptian god of the underworld who uh, has the scales with the feather and it's like, he's judging whether this person has a pure soul or not. It's almost like when somebody comes to you and communicates something to you, you're trying to weigh up their, what they're saying and see if there's any value in it, see how honest they're being. Um, does it, it's, they're giving me Judge Judy. Uh, it's like, um, Judge Judy's brilliant at, I wonder if she's Libra. <laughs> she's so good at like, um, it's like she lets people talk and she almost like lets people talk themselves into like catching themselves out in their own lie like she'll pick up on the contradictions of what people are saying and it's like it's almost like it's almost high priestess energy in the but it's coming from a very intellectual place and a, an analytical place which is you know you are an air sign you're ruled by uh thoughts and analysis and um communication so there's something where you're it's like you're seeing behind the veil you're or you're veiling that you're doing this process it's like you're you're listening you're watching, you might not necessarily be speaking yet, but you're open to it. So yeah, it's like weighing up. I've just got that. I did, that's not even in my notes. Right. Uh, so the first song that I got, like that I want to talk about, and now it's not a song for your reading, but I just wanted to mention it, um, about being in that Libra and energy. The song, I don't feel like dancing kind of came up on my, um, YouTube recommendations, but, um, and I've not listened to it for years, but when it was out or when I hear it, it's one of those songs literally that makes me dance. And now dancing is really important to me um, in terms of keeping myself happy. Then this is what I'm talking about, about that Libra and energy. If I'm not happy, if I've had a challenging day, if other people, it's like other, other people's energy is affecting you. Uh, if something's happened, somebody's been difficult to deal with. Um, it's like, I don't feel like dancing, right? It's when you're in that bad mood. I don't feel like dancing. But the thing with that song is that I always dance to it. I can't help it. It's like one or two lines in or just the rhythm, just the beat. And I'm up doing the stupid, like, kicky dance that he does. Um, and it immediately perks me up. It immediately gets me into a better mood. And this is what I'm talking about, about my own energy um, and music and dance and rhythm being really important to me personally and my energy in keeping me in that high vibration. So the, you could do something similar or there could be something else that helps you, particularly piano playing. He says um, the old Joanna plays. Um, now, interestingly enough, uh, Joanna, um, I feel like Joanna could be a name for somebody. Um, like, obviously, it's referring to a piano. So maybe somebody plays the piano, but I'm getting Joanna as a name. Now, 
I don't know, the women of these cards, they have quite a similar look to them. This one actually specifies it can be a woman over 25 years, brown eyes and brown hair. So I don't know if this is... Um, applies to you in any kind of way uh, but the lady on this card she does kind of look like my cousin who's called Joanna and who actually I think she does work in a solicitor's office I'm not sure if she is a solicitor but yeah she works in a solicitor's office so um, the justice card can indicate law contracts um, uh, paperwork solicitors uh, all this kind of thing the court system justice so there's some, there's some kind of like legal thing going on here as an underlying. Um, I feel like there's been some sort of injustice that you want to rebalance. Now, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So let me just run through my notes. I also just, as I kind of sat down to do the reading, I got True Blue by Madonna. Again, truth, right? Honesty. Uh, True Blue, baby, I love you. Um, so what have I got? Swords up, open to communication excuse me, or taking action, I'm just taking my top off, I'm getting a bit warm, um, they're all seated, all three of these women are seated, so it's almost like sitting on your throne, sitting in your own power, in your own seat of power, like Judge Judy, right, she sits, she's got her place, and she's sat in her place, and she's firm and grounded, she's unmovable, so it's like knowing your own truth and being unmovable, um, in control, stable, grounded, overseer, authority, truth, demands truth. These are all my notes. Um, but also something here about delays and progression. Uh, so it actually does say delays on this card, which I wouldn't normally read with the Empress. Normally the Empress is about expansion. Sometimes the notes on the bottom of these cards, I, I, I don't think, they're not the way that I read the cards. Um, so there's something here with the Queen of Swords, ready to communicate, open to communication, looking forwards towards the future. Then there's something to do with like a stop because you're dealing with some kind of contract or like loophole I'm getting, like law loophole, something like this, or you're, you're weighing up what somebody's saying to you, you're trying to look for the truth of the situation, so there's a blockage where you stop, and then you're starting to move again. Now it's 11, which breaks down to a 2, going into a 3, so 2, 3, so there is progression, but there's been some kind of slowing down, some kind of blockage. Um... Honesty is valued, I've got there. Now, I, if I went to the bathroom before I did your reading, kind of, um, you know, too much information. Um, but I felt like, I felt like I needed to, no, I felt like I needed to, this is coming out wrong. I felt like there was something I needed to see. I felt like there was like a clue to your reading somewhere, but in another room. So I went to the bathroom um, and they, this book was laying on the ground, The Adventures of Robin Hood. Um, my kids have been reading it in the bathroom, so it's <laughs> too much information, sorry. Um, and I opened it to the page where the ribbon was. So again, remembering that your cards are something to do deal with law, law and authority. Um, now, it's interesting because I got... Um, Robin Hood came out, I think it was for cancer, yeah, because it was on the chariot, chariot card. Um, I said, oh, that guy, he looks like the... Um, he looks like King John from... Robin Hood men in tights. So I think could be dealing with Cancerian here. Um, but I'm getting strong Aquarius energy, very strong Aquarius energy as well. Um, before I get into this, uh, Venus, who is our, um, our ruling planet, um, is actually in Aquarius right now, as is Mercury and several other planets. Um, Aquarian, Aquarius energy is very progressive. It's very much like, um, it's independent. It's almost like not breaking the rules to be a rebel, but it's almost like challenging the rules or rewriting the rules or sort of going your own way kind of thing. It is a bit Rob. So I'm seeing Robin Hood as this Aquarius energy. So I don't know if you have strong Aquarius in your chart or if this is somebody that you're dealing with. Um, and again, it's like Robin Hood is like the thief, right? He's, he's, I keep getting this thing about good guys and bad guys. Robin Hood technically is the bad guy. He's going against authority, uh, but he's doing it for the for the right reasons. So it's this robbing the rich to give to the poor business, standing up to um, authority that is, um, I mean, they're the real thieves, right? In the Robin Hood story, the, uh, they, they're overtaxing people into poverty. So there's this real kind of like weighing up of what is good and what is bad, um, being very clear about, the intentions of people, are they doing something? Yes, they might be breaking the law perhaps, but are they doing it because of a good reason? Ugh, something like this, it's a bit confusing, but when I open the book, uh, they're up to this scene where um, he's he's going against Guy of Gisborne, uh, so it's kind of like the king's men, the sheriff's kind of thing. Uh, he led the shoulders, soldiers up to the castle wall, they surrounded Robin from both sides, swords trembled in their hands, can you see they've all got the swords up? So again, swords up. So it could be something to do with like, 
almost like ready for battle I'm get, getting. Uh, Robin fought bravely, uh, but even he couldn't beat so many soldiers. A blade cut his arm, another struck his side. With a desperate cry, he fell from the wall and into the castle moat. The water turned red with blood. So interesting because in that life and death reading, um, it was going on about the riverboat song. Uh, why did the river turn red? Um, it's because Robin fell in the water. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the soldiers waited to see the outlook. Uh, see if the outlaw rose to the surface a minute passed but then another but robin didn't rise robin hood is dead guy declared triumphantly you imbecile the sheriff cried look uh high above the castle stood robin hood um he had the sheriff's treasure so what did he do i think he used like a reed um but this like they thought he was dead and then he was there all of a sudden it's like oh my god he's still alive like Look at what card fell out. Literally, this card fell out of the pack as I was shuffling and balanced on my hand like this. It like jumped out of the pack and balanced on my hand. It's the Phoenix card, rising from the rising from the dead. So there's something here where something's rising from the dead, rising from the ashes of a situation. Now, just to kind of go back, um, the page before, I said I was picking up on this Aquarius energy. The page before is where he they're trying to hang the villagers, um, and he Robin fires the arrow to cut through the ropes. Um, so that is that's Aquarian um, energy, that's the hangman card of the tarot, so strong Aquarian energy here, probably because Venus is in Aquarius, so there's something about standing up to authority, doing the right thing, even though it means going against the rules, uh, something to do with like this Robin Hood thief type thing, um, back from the dead, um, all this kind of stuff, now unbelievably, the first song that randomised for you on Spotify was When It All Falls Down by Alan Walker and Juliander, I feel like there's something coming up for you. I, I feel that energy, like, it's like precipice energy. It's like knowing that something big is about to break, knowing that a tower moment's coming in almost. You're going to have to defend yourself, probably, possibly. Um, so you cross the line. It's time to say F you. <laughs> uh, what's the point in saying that when you know how I'll react? You think you can just take it back, but shit just don't work like that. So this this is a sweary song. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but I'll be fine. When it all falls down, I'll be fine. Right? This is really key to what's coming through. Strongly coming through with that phoenix. Um, also, like, just jump into the other card that fell out of this deck as I was shuffling. It was the warrior card. This is like you. You're like the warrior, you're ready to, you get this all the time, it's like you're the diamond heart, you're, you're bulletproof, you are the one that can walk through the fire, you're ready, you're, you're, your energy is so strong Libra, um, but I feel like it's time, it's, I feel like this has been building for a while, it's like it's time, um, the other song that you got was Myth by Beach House, um, uh, I've got, I've wrote Honesty down again, um, you say just what you mean, you say just what you mean, I think this is you, Libra. You say what you mean. You 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 know your truth and you own it and you speak your truth. Um, you know, you may hold back sometimes because it's like judging whether it's the right time to say something in a situation. But you're very clear, at least internally, um, with that diamond heart, diamond mind, you, you're very clear on your own truth. Um, uh, can't keep hanging on to what is dead and gone. Let the ashes fly. These are all words from that song. So you can go and check out the... Uh, these songs in the description box down below I'll list all the songs that come through for your reading before your reading during your reading and um, after the reading as I'm tidying up and uploading the videos everything will be down there um, those often they're often so symbolic of the, the actual cards that I pull so definitely uh, the songs and the cards work hand in hand as well uh, you know also with my intuition so um, definitely go and check that out um, Sometimes you don't have to worry. Oh, this is like a thing that I got. Sometimes you don't have to worry about what's fair. You have to make the cut anyway. But then the six, as I was thinking this, the six of pentacles f flew out, which is about, it's like the minor arcana of justice. It's like balance, equal give and take. So I think this is what you want almost. Or you want a fair outcome. But maybe, you know, come what may, you kind of have to make a cut anyway. Um, it's like you maybe you need to take the hit. Um you got a third song, um, just because um, the the cards ran over. Um, you got also got Up the Bracket by the Libertines. Now, it's funny because I keep getting uh, Pete, Pete Doherty songs, uh, who's the lead singer of the Libertines. So there's something to do with, it could be the name. Uh, maybe somebody's called Pete, maybe somebody's called Doherty. Uh, maybe, um, I don't know, I think he's from London. So there could be, there's something to him 
rather than the specific songs that are coming through, I feel. Uh, but obviously Liberty, Truth, Justice and Liberty for All, very, very Libra and very Aquarius as well. Truth, Justice and Liberty for All, um, Equality, um, something coming through here. Um, I've got, have you been listening? Have you been listening? Why have I wrote that? Oh, have you been listening? Um, so the RAF advert came on again, uh, fail, learn, win. So it's like, um, the universe has been teaching you, Libra. It's like every time you fail, you're meant to learn a lesson from it and you're meant to get back up again. Uh, so it's, it's something to do with Libra, you being very authentic, you knowing your truth, you, um, doing what's right and fair for everybody involved, um, being a very authentic person um, and learning lessons when you try and fail so that you can not fail when it really matters is what is what they say. And I feel like the time is coming where, when it really matters. Um, I was kind of channeling Titanium by G G David, Go Go David Goetta and Sia. Um, because it, this is what it feels like. It feels like you're building up to something. You, you're in high vibrational energy. The universe is going to throw something at you. It could come in, you know, left field. It could really shock you. It feels like a tower moment coming in, but you're almost prepared for it. Um, so sticks and stones won't break my bones. All your bullets ricochet, fire away. Shoot me down, but I won't fall. Um, and then I've got another little thing saying, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to survive, Libra. So I feel like there could be some kind of slander almost coming your way. I feel like people are going to be saying things to you um, that are unfair, that are un... Um, uh, it's like, you know, when people take something out of context or twist words or, um, you know, they don't look at the bigger picture and they they come at you um, trying to attack you with the words. Like, sticks and stones won't break my bones. You know your truth. You know you're, you're authentic. Um, and you're strong and it's like you don't it's like the bullets will ricochet Libra they're not going to actually pierce your armor um okay well right, let's get into it a bit further then <laughs> what else are we going to get I'm interested to see I'm Libra so I'm like oh my goodness why is this <laughs> I'm scared I'm so scared but I'm not scared I'm like bring it on um yeah because like I feel like Libra you've you're coming into this energy of where you you really do know yourself and you know you value yourself you see you're in a value um and it's almost like it doesn't matter now what the rest of the world thinks it doesn't matter what the world throws at you it doesn't matter what your circumstances are i mean it does on a minor level but i feel like you're going to get up and you're going to keep on dancing um okay okay so let's get you a randomized song on camera then there's lots of bits of dust around um I'm going to focus on the Justice card. Libra, 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 Libra. What was I just saying? Shh, shh, shh. Oh, innuendo. Yeah, definitely. I'm very lewd. Um, the show must go on. It's a clown. Queen, you are the queen of swords. The show must go on. Phoenix energy, picking yourself back up. Uh, keeping on fighting. It's like, no matter what the world throws at me. Uh, literally, like, literally the last thing I said, the last thing I, I wrote down, and I can show you this here, look, with my terrible handwriting, you don't have to be perfect, you just have to survive, the show must go on, keep, it's like, keep fighting Libra. Right, I'm going to listen to that song, I'm going to do my little spiel and tune into the energies properly, um, I'm going to put these cards away, I'm going to shuffle them back into the deck, so if they come out, they are definitely coming out with a strong message, but I feel like they probably won't, because I've already mentioned them. Um, but yeah, we're going to find out what your fairy tale story is. Oh, it feels like, oh, the, oh, they're giving me, although my heart is breaking, what is it? Oh, I can't remember the line. I'm going to listen to it off camera. Uh, maybe Paul's going to have a listen to it as well. Um, and we're going to get into it. Back in a minute, Libra. Oh, that song. So uh, it actually says, um, I guess I'm learning. I must be warmer now. Um, See, so it's like all the failed attempts. You're learning. Um, well, you're learning something, Libra. And you're being very authentic while you're doing it. Uh, the thing is, though, there is that putting on a smile, putting on a brave face element. They were kind of showing me, first of all, because it's a meme that I use quite a lot, uh, because I'm Cinderella Mouse is my full handle. Um, there's a picture of, I think it's Jerry, Tom and Jerry, uh, the little brown mouse. Um, and he's got clown makeup on and he's looking in the mirror and he puts on a little red nose and laughs. Uh, so it's a gif that I use quite often. Um, and it's like, haha, I'm a clown. 
Um, and they showed me uh, the scene from the Joker where he's painting his makeup on, he's painting the smile on. And kind of like very briefly flashed up Birds of Prey for me as well, like, um, what's her name, Harley Quinn. And um, they showed me also the uh, Knight of Swords from this deck. So it'll be interesting to see if that comes out. I d it may not. Um, also, that thing, like, the show must go on, inside my heart is breaking, all this kind of business. That song made me cry. But you wouldn't know that necessarily unless I told you. So uh, there's something there, Libra, to that. Okay, let's pull you some cards. I really feel like Libra, you're very, it's like you're almost prepared to stand on your own two feet in a way. It's almost like, I heard, wait, I'm, they're giving me something. I can take the, I can take the hit. It's, it's a song, but I didn't quite get the full, full song. Hang on. It might be something from Birds of Prey. I'll have to make a note of it and see if I can uh, look it up after the reading. Um, I, can t I can take the hit. Um, it's not hit me with your best shot. That's another one from Birds of Prey. I can take the hit. Um, okay, let's keep going. Le okay, evil. <laughs> Libra, you're not the evil queen. You deserve sugar, not salt. Uh, maybe you feel like you've got to make some kind of cut and you're going to be the bad, you're going to look like the bad guy, but you deserve sugar. Uh, remember to practice self-love. Yeah, Libra, there's something going on here where it's like, I mean, I think you do value yourself. Um, but there's something to do with uh, it's not even like prioritizing yourself i'm getting like strong on your own it's almost like i mean aquarius it could just be a venus being in aquarius it's a very very independent energy um it's it doesn't like to be tied um so let's just read from the book uh Number two, I'm getting as well that like, kind of feeling like it's almost like something going through my hand. I get it quite a lot lately. Um, it used to feel like someone holding my hand and pushing the thumb into my hand, but it's, it's increasingly feeling like almost like a nail digging into my hand, which, um, you know, obviously has a huge uh, symbolistic meaning. But I don't know if it's that or not, so I don't want to say that. It could, it could be, it could be loads of different things. Um, uh, I've had it. I've had it since uh, the listening to the Queen song. Um, right, evil Queen, you deserve sugar, not salt. Someone in your life is mistreating you. You keep trying to see the good in them, but they just keep disappointing you again and again. This fits in so well with those songs. Truth is, some people don't deserve second chances. As difficult as it may be, this is your sign that you need to cut them loose, unfollow them, and block their number. It's time to move on. Do whatever it takes to find some inner peace. For it's just as precious as gold. Exactly what I was saying. Like, you, it's like you need to make a cut. Like, somebody's mistreating you. Somebody's not treating you fairly. You keep giving them second chances. You keep... you you. It could be somebody that you're in a relationship with, with Libra. Because Libra, you... Um, it's funny, you've got, like, the rose crystal. Uh, it's, it's actually a sun, sunstone. But uh, it's a bit like rose quartz. Um, you do tend to in love and again it could, it could be romantic love it could be somebody that you love as a friend as a family member uh, but there will be love involved this is somebody close to your heart and you are um sorry they just as i said close to your heart they just showed me that sugar and salt is made of crystals um so it's dissolvable oh but you're it's like you should have that diamond heart don't let your heart dissolve in the situation keep it keep it hard um Maybe you're dealing with other people, but their hearts are like sugar and salt. You know, they they're dissolvable. They're not, they're not, they're not as tough as you. They're not as hard as you. They're not as clear and authentic as you. Um, okay, I'm really getting the crystals through. Um, perhaps you need to work with crystals, rose crystals, sunstone. I th maybe it's just reminding me because I had the the urge to kind of read um, read the story of this bracelet. So just give me a second. So yeah, my bracelet. It's from Akira Rose. If you want to check that out, um, this should, should be on Facebook. Uh, disclaimer: It is my cousin. <laughs> um, so right. So this bracelet. Um, my mum got it for me for Christmas, and I don't know how 
if she sp picked the stones specifically. But I was, um, it's not the Christmas just gone, it was Christmas, the Christmas before that, 2020 Christmas, or 2019 Christmas it would have been. Yeah, 2019 Christmas. And I was really going through something. I was basically going through a dark night of the soul. I was my head was a mess. I was an emotional wreck. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I didn't know what was happening to me. I was so confused. And my mum gave me the, this for Christmas and I read these leaflets and I was in tears because it was almost like these crystals were exactly what I needed at the time. So sunstone is a joyful, light-inspiring stone that instills good nature and heightens intuition. Again, good nature, right? Um, you've been very authentic. If life has lost its sweetness... <laughs> um sunstone will restore it and help you nurture yourself clearing all the chakras and bringing in light energy this stone allows the real self to shine through happily okay true colors let them shine through libra uh, sunstone fa facil facilitates self-empowerment this is what i'm picking up on self-empowerment libra independence vitality and increases self-worth and confidence stimulating self-healing powers sunstone acts as an antidepressant and lifts dark moods it dissipates fearfulness alleviates stress and encourages optimism and enthusiasm it switches to a positive take on events so this is what you need to do you need to stick in that high vibrational energy i'm going to show you that one you can pause it and read it if you want to read about the um clear quartz as well but i'm really getting the sunstone or pink quartz is the one that you need i actually think my mum's here talking about her now <laughs> let me just have a quick look grandma and granddad are here i uh, will be back in a minute okay sorry about the interruption i'm back and i brought coffee in a, in a sunset mug because that's appropriate to what i was just talking about uh so um i was talking to the beast there about the reading and i was explaining how like uh, I was talking about Freddie Mercury, how he th throws his arms back. And I was talking about how it's like fire away. It's almost like burying your chest and saying, hit me with your best shot is kind of what I'm getting. Preparing for battle, all this kind of stuff. And I was explaining about the Phoenix energy, how it's like, um, it's forged in fire. It's like almost like embracing the storms when they come in because it makes you stronger. Um, it's like, yeah, it's like, it really is. It's like, come on universe, hit me with your best shot. I'm ready. And I, I know that like, I know I'm not going to fail. And I know that every time I get knocked down and I get back up, I'm stronger. Um, so <laughs> as I kind of threw my, arm, my arms out to kind of do that Freddie Mercury pose, and because I was talking about storms, um, I kind of saw Storm from um, X-Men, um, how powerful she is, right? She, she, she does that pose, legs together, arms out. She rises up in the air like storms billowing around her, her hair's flying, her eyes are glowing. But also... Jean Grey, who I always call Lady Jane Grey for some reason, but Jean Grey, um, she turns into the phoenix. Um, so it really is like, again, phoenix energy, a lot of like cartoon references, superhero type things with Birds of Prey, the Joker, um, X-Men. Is X-Men DC? I need to check that out. I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, so DC maybe, Washington DC. Um, okay, let's keep going because there's so much going on here. Like intuition is going crazy. It's going to be the longest reading ever. Um, it's like it's time, Libra. Or it's like the universe is testing you. It's like, have you learned your lessons? So I really feel like, and I don't want to scare anyone. It's a good thing, right? It's a good thing because that's how you become this phoenix. And the, the, more, the more times you do you survive things the more times the universe throws difficult challenges your way and you survive i'm re i'm sorry i'm staring at this diamond here on this um archetypes deck the kim crown's archetypes deck um and it's like space as well like you know phoenix like storm um the more times it happens the stronger you get like you're getting very powerful libra um 24 Remember to practice self-love. You're familiar with the concepts of self-love and self-care, but either you've never actively practiced them or there's something you've fallen behind on. Either way, you should get back on track. Keep yourself maintained in all ways, big or small. That can mean calling it quits to take a lux luxurious bath instead. Or that can mean putting on a rose water, rose again, face mask, and getting out your planner so you can sort out your life before it gets too out of control. So it's like knowing when to take a break, knowing when to step out of a situation, um, taking the time to rest when you can so that you can fight the battles that life throws at you. Now, obviously, I'm not talking literal battles. It can be um, somebody says something or somebody, you know, says something mean to you or cruel behind your back or someone does something to um, that's hurtful um, or that... <sighs> 
something comes in that's unfair. You know, I, I'm thinking about when I used to deal with um, this awful electricity company. I've talked about it before on different readings. It was called Sparked. Um, and they every time they sent a bill, it had different figures on it. Like, not different figures for the amount for the bill, but, like, different meter readings. They just made... It was like they were just making it up. It's like they were just plucking figures from the air. So, ultimately, we went to the ombudsman, uh, and we had all the evidence. We had all our meter readings. We had all our bills, uh, all the, you know, the receipts that we'd paid, all the bills that they sent us. So, we were like, we have paid everything that they've asked us to pay, and yet they're still saying we owe them money. We don't even live there anymore. Here's the last meter reading. Like, they were, they were, they were getting, like... Um, um, bailiffs after us and everything you know sending us threatening letters and we've like we literally paid we were we were like this right we were like we've literally paid everything that you asked us to pay we've paid everything that we owe and we've got all the evidence that we need to show you that we've done that um and so yeah we went to the ombudsman we just passed it all over to the ombudsman and obviously they ruled in our favor we all could be because we'd done the right thing um and this company i think they were a new company so they probably had like admin errors um but yeah, they ruled in our favour and we got a payout for it. So you could be dealing with something like that. Um, but again, like when it first hits, when you first get into these situations where there's an injustice, uh, it sends you into a bit of a flap. You think, how do I deal with this? This isn't fair. Um, how do I stand up to this authority, right? Um, you know, technically, the you know, the law's on their side. If they say you owe a bill, you owe a bill. Um, so, but it's like the, we were the small people and we fought this battle with the help of... Um, citizens advice and the ombudsman services that support um we we learned how to stand up to uh, authority that was unfair against that kind of like robin hood um you know they were the people were overtaxed robin hood stood up to them you know lived to fight another day got stronger because they learned the lessons you know they learned how to handle things that they didn't know how to handle before um I've had the same situation where I moved out of a property and the people who moved in after us actually ordered stuff from a catalogue in my name. It was about £200. Um, and so they, um, again, I got this letter from a debt collection agency saying, you owe money for this catalogue that I ne literally never used. I never used this catalogue, but I think when I got the catalogue, they set up an account for me or something, but I'd never ordered anything from it. Um, and I got this letter saying, yeah, you owe two, you've bought £200 worth of stuff, you need to pay it. But because I was very young and I didn't know how to handle things like that, I paid it. Which I wish I could go back in time and change that because it wasn't fair. Um, so yeah, it, but as I got older, I learned how to stand up for myself. So there's something going on there. Um, okay, who are you going to meet, Libra, on your journey? <gasps> Libra, you've got the cosmic egg. Oh my goodness, this is, oh look, it's me, hi, um, you've got, I'm going to leave that out, um, so the, yeah, it's like the small person, the small person who's standing up to bigger powers, the elk represents emperors, which are like author symbols of authority, the people who control things, but you're just a little mouse, but a little mouse can frighten a big elephant, right, uh, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, don't, it's funny that they were showing me the mouse with the clown mask. It's like, don't underestimate the little people. You're not underestimating the little people, Libra. You might be one of the little people or you might be, uh, you know, so you might be some kind of solicitor or you're very good at um, uh, documenting evidence um, and supporting people when it comes to things like this, something like this. But the cosmic egg, this is someone you're going to meet on your journey. Uh, this is somebody who... <sighs> The cosmic egg is um, it's a gift from the universe. It's a divine gift from the universe. It's something really special coming your way. But the snake protects it. They protect it because it's just for you. And it's... I feel like it's growing. I'm thinking about how the snake sheds its skin and, and grows. So this egg is growing, it's maturing, and it's being protected by the snake energy. Um, but it's just for you and it's very, very special. So there's somebody here who is connected to this cosmic egg energy. It could be somebody who has something for you, a gift for you. They may not even realize this might be somebody that you meet in your future who offers you a job, or it could be somebody in your future who, um, is like your perfect person. There's, so, but it's this, a very special energy connected with something in your future connected with the person that you're going to meet and it's very powerful 
So we'll pull more cards on that and find out more about that. So uh, you are the, you're like Maleficent, I think, in this story so far. It's like misunderstood, perhaps. Um, people have maybe cast you out of a situation, but you deserve sugar. You've been treated unfairly in something. Maybe this is because this is your your life journey. This is your fairy tale story. You know, if it's a story arc, so it's learning how to stand up for yourself when you're treated unfairly. That's what it is. And the more you do it, the stronger you get. And then you get this cosmic egg, something really special, right? Tell me about Libra's fairy tale story. Then tell me about Libra's fairy tale story. The vow. No way. I saw that in the pre shuffle. The vow and apocalypse. Oh my goodness. Okay. And look, it's almost like the phoenix flying away. <sighs> Immediately what I'm guessing, the reason why I'm saying is that there's some kind of contract. The um, justice card there symbolizes a contract, a vow. Um, the mentor and the underline there. I feel like that's connected to the cosmic egg energy. Um, or it's the universe teaching you. Um, the vow symbolizes some kind of commitment that you've made. Could be, it could be marriage, right? Or it could be some kind of contract between you and somebody else. It could be some kind of promise that you've made to yourself, uh, but there's something that you committed to. And it's time to review, or your your fairy tale story is about reviewing some kind of commitment uh, that you've promised, that you've made, um, and seeing, is it gonna, it's like you're gonna have a tower moment, it's gonna shake the foundations and really test this. Is it is this commitment meant to stand or is it meant to be broken? I'm getting that it's probably meant to be broken because already with those swords up, it's like you're ready to cut something out and you've got the apocalypse, this card. This clarifies for me that there's something that's meant to end. There's a, it could be a soulmate contract with somebody, uh, somebody who's in your life to teach you a lesson and the lesson's been learnt, so it's time for that contract to end. Um, okay. Let's find out. Okay. The promise, the oath, the contract. I always think it looks like, um, it makes me uncomfortable because it looks like two people's hands being forced together. So it's like almost like a forced marriage. Um, I hope nobody's in that kind of situation. It is illegal, actually, forced marriages uh, in the UK. Uh, arranged marriages are fine, but people have to consent. Um, the, the promise, the oath, the contract. When the vow is spoken, the air shifts, karmic ties are formed, and destiny tilts on its axis. axis. Our words and intentions have immense power. There is a reason the great mythic stories of our past often include the recitation of oaths and the mixing of drops of blood as a mark of union obviously don't do that um don't mix your blood with somebody else's um it's unless you like make it a baby which makes sense but just be careful of like um diseases right uh the tricky part is that reciting the vow no matter how casually activates the eternal and unseen forces of the world the ancestors bear witness the laws of nature respond these promises cannot be unsaid or forgotten so breaking them can leave lingering in, ling lingering complexities and loose ends this card calls us to acknowledge the vow we are living by, consciously or unconsciously, and either recommit to it or create a ritual that signifies its closure. You have been underestimating the power of your promises. When light, bearing witness to the shift towards destiny. When dark, unconscious vows, unkept promises and messy karma. Go deeper, learn the yamas, the five vows of the seeker. Think of the last promise you made. Was it to yourself or another? Has it been upheld or broken? Any time the energy of the vow is present, we are in the archetypal realm of ceremony and ritual that means time stands still and anything is possible. It's funny you had that moment, um, what is it, momental bliss? Um, from the Beach House song, uh, myth. Momentary bliss, momentary bliss. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Apocalypsis. Yeah. Don't panic. It's not the apocalypse, but it's something like ending and closing out. Uh, and it, it's creating that phoenix energy within you, which leads you to the cosmic egg. It's you're almost like leading you to your destiny here. It's quite, quite a big reading, I have to say, Libra. Um, removing the veil of deception. Ugh. Apocalypse indicates a particularly painful time, one that unfolds when two 
disparate dynamic, dynamic two disparate dynamics occur simultaneously, pulling the psyche in in seemingly opposing directions. If anyone can handle that, it's you. You and Gemini can deal with the opposites. The first is a lifting of the veil. That means truths, maybe somebody is getting married, right? Bow and lifting of the veil. This means truths that have been kept in the dark are revealed, seen and unearthed. No matter how relieving it is to witness them come into the light, an element of despair and grief follows. The second dynamic is the regeneration that comes from the wreckage of the revealed truth. Video cut out, but just as a reminder that we had the phoenix. The regeneration that comes from the wreckage of the revealed truth. The old narrative breaks and a new story forms. Apocalypsis energy is similar to a forest fire, devastation for the sake of regeneration. The veil lifts and we see who and what has been hiding. From the nakedness of truth, a child is born. Have faith in the process. Hold on to your centre. That is the only way. This is what I'm saying. This is what I've been saying all along, right? I love when the cards validate what I've been saying. It's like, there's that veil behind her. She's ready to lift the veil. She's ready to speak her truth. She's ready to communicate openly and honestly. Okay, the sword is lifted, indicating she's ready to communicate and take action. So... The scales are balancing. You're figuring out, you're looking for the truth, right? You, th that's what you want. You want truth and honesty in a situation. And again, this is your life journey. This is your fairy tale story. So the quest for truth, um, weighing up oaths and promises and commitments and saying, is it still working for me? Is this still right? Or have the scales tipped? Um, is there an imbalance here that makes things unfair in a situation? Uh, so you want to, you are, I feel like you're the storm almost, you're testing the foundations here, um, seeing the truth, seeing things very, very clearly. Um, and it's like, is your tower going to stand or fall? And I feel like you're making the decision. Um, when light, the unknown becomes known and guides the way. When dark, nihilism, fatalism and hopelessness. Go deeper. Michael meets when the world doesn't end. The movie, this is the end. It's funny because on, in a couple of those uh, Tell Me Anything readings, uh, the random readings, um, there's, I've been seeing the death card or the ten of swords in reverse or the coffin card in reverse constantly all week. Um, it's like, oh, they're giving me Katy Perry's this, It's Not the End of the World. And, sorry, and Lana Del Rey's um, when the world is was at war, we just kept dancing. I'm going to make a note of those in a second. This card has a strong relationship to Alethea, uh, which means truth. If both cards appear in one reading, you've got some real uncovering to do. Take heed. Somebody could be coming towards you to speak a truth and you're you're ready to listen. You're ready to... I want to say judge them, but I don't think you're judging them in terms of like uh, being judgy. I feel like you're listening to what they have to say and weighing weighing it up with the other things that you know. So it's a weighing up of the evidence that you're doing. Um, it's not coming from a place of judgment. It's coming from a place of truth and authenticity and what's fair and what's right and equal, they're telling me. All kinds of things will be revealed during a time of ap apocalypsis, from big global lies to little white ones that lace the bedroom sheets. Brace yourself for the horse of truth to storm through your every field. It could be you. Um... Wanting open, wanting things to be open and honest, wanting things to be revealed. It's like, come what may, I want the truth to be spoken. Um, I want the air to be cleared. It's like there's a big massive elephant in the room and it's, and you can't stand it, Libra, because that's not, that's not who you are. You know, you are shining that light through, um, trying to seek the truth. Okay, I'm just making a note of those songs. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, it's normal for power structures to to fall when it's the age of Aquarius. We're in the age of Aquarius now. We've come out of uh, all those big planets being in Capricorn for a long time, which is to do with uh, reinforcing rules, reinforcing structure, um, doing things by the book. But now everything's shifted into Aquarius. There's so many planets in Aquarius right now, uh, including uh, Saturn, Jupiter, um, Venus, which is our ruling planet. Um, it's It's... A big cycle it's like a 20 30 year cycle for some of these big slow moving planets to get from sign to, you know around all the different signs so uh, it's a few years that they spend in Aquarius and it's a time of uh, power structures falling or being called into question um, 
big global shifts, uh, changes in politics that makes things fairer for the people, um, a redistribution of power. Um, it's very, um, it feels like the rug's getting pulled out from under our feet quite a lot. Um, so, and as an example of this, uh, recently in the news, um, some people started playing the stock market um, and playing kind of like the the big players, like the rich people at their own game. Um, and I don't fully understand it. I kind of need Margot Robbie to explain it in a hot bath to me. But um, it's something to do with like buying up stocks and then selling them on for a higher price, uh, creating demand or something like this. Um, and it's actually, it's really revealed um, the kind of underhanded tactics almost. I think it's legal, but it's very dirty. Uh, the dirty tactics that people use to kind of play the stock market that keep the rich getting richer and kind of take advantage of smaller um, smaller companies. Um, so the sun there on the underlying as I'm talking. Um, so yeah, you could find that there's big global shifts in terms of like uh, people calling power structures into question right now and for the next couple of years. The evil queen and potion then. Tell me more about this uh, self-love. Self-love, you deserve sugar. Whoa. Uh, straight away, the judgment card, they're flying out. Uh, this is your energy. It's also scorpionic energy. It talks about death and rebirth. rebirth. Again, it's phoenix energy. It's um, feeling a call, feeling like you have some sort of destiny. You hear the call. Uh, it gets you up out of a situation where you're stuck. It feels like something is possibly dead and buried. Um, I, I, but you move and you come out of it like wings, like look, like wings, that Freddie Mercury pose again, like chest bare you can take the hit i feel like it's almost like these dark energies are coming at you but you just it's really giving me like storm and the phoenix from x-men it's like um you're coming out of it so powerful and so authentic like it's like you've generated all this good karma for yourself and it's just like that karma becomes this protective shield um so then we've got this four of pentacles so there could again be something that you're tied up in or clinging on to uh, with this vow card here there's something that's um keeping you tangled again i was it talked about some sort of delay uh could be something to do with um an earth sign uh, or a mother the mother of pentacles uh it could be you actually your responsibility um to others uh the mother of pentacles talks about uh, literally a mother um it can be um uh, a boss um, a wife uh, it's somebody who is, uh, they're normally in some kind of commitment, um, you know, they're the wife card of the tarot, um, they're normally very, very grounded, very dependable, they uh, they nurture the people around them, uh, you can see she's looking after this little fawn here, um, so there's something to do with like you being tangled up in some kind of connection to somebody else or to something else, uh, it could be a workplace, um, but there's this new thing here. I feel like this is tied to this cosmic egg. Uh, there's a new opportunity here. It's it's an idea. It's not so much that it's. It may not. It may just be a concept at the moment. But it, with it being a, um, a pentacle, it's something that's grounded and earthly and practical. Maybe you're thinking about making some sort of investment. Um, but the, it's like a, a seed being planted in your mind by the universe. I feel like it's connected to the call here with the judgment card, of you realizing there's something you need to do or realizing there's something you want to do you're currently tied to something but you almost deserve this kind of like something that the universe is aligning for you here that that could grow to something very big and very expansive but you may have commitments possibly maybe like children which prevent you traveling or um yeah so you're doing some kind of weighing up here but it, like it's a concept but it's a seed that can be planted it could grow into a huge oak tree right uh, oh we've got another card the father, oh no, the father of pentacles in reverse. So for some of you, you may be leaving some kind of commitment. It could be, again, the mother of pentacles and the father of pe pentacles is, the mar they're married in the tarot. They're married in the tarot. Um, so with, with it being in reverse, this is clarifying for me that there is some kind of split here. So it could be a, a long-term partner. It could be a husband and wife. It could be um, somebody that you work with. It could be uh, some kind of family relationship. It's somebody that you have some sort of soulmate tied to, karmic tied to, uh, literal contract with. Uh, but there's some kind of, there's something not right here. There's, there's, there's trouble in paradise. Uh, the, the father of pentacles in reverse could indicate somebody who's very stubborn. 
somebody who's very greedy, somebody who takes too much and doesn't give back, they're not nurturing, they're not dependable, they're not grounded. Uh, all the things that the father in the pentacles in the upright is, the father in the uh, of pentacles in the reverse is not. So again, this is a general reading. It's not going to be for everybody. There's different ways that you could read this. Um, take it as it resonates. Leave it if it doesn't. Tell me about the cosmic egg, please. <laughs> I don't like this card normally, but I like that it's in the reverse. Okay, and I'll tell you why. The Five of Cups is a card about crying over spilt milk. It's about a lack mentality. It's about sulking because you feel like you're missing out or, or feeling like relationships haven't worked out and you you like looking back at them and thinking oh you know I'm so sad because of that thing in the past that wasn't good um but there's two cups always still standing on this card um this if if that horse raised its head it would see that there's a perfect relationship it's it's like a soulmate connection somebody who's your equal there's equal give and take it's a balanced relationship two people who see eye to eye probably an intuitive link between them it, it feels like it's the sort of person that you meet them and you're like I just know we're going to be the best of friends. Um, so it could be love, it could be friendship, it could be family, it could be work, right? But it's somebody who's an equal to you um, and there's emotional balance with this person. So with it being in the reverse, it's like you're not sulking. You, you, No way are you sulking sitting there crying over spilt milk. You're looking at the glass as half full. You're looking at it as like, oh no, I spilt half the milk. Brilliant, I can top it up with fresher milk, right? And the horse is looking up at the cosmic egg. So, oh, it's not you, is it? It's not you, it's... So there's somebody else that you're dealing with. This is somebody on your life path. I don't know why I'm talking about you. Could be mirroring. Um, somebody here is like, um, they don't sulk. They look to the future. When things go wrong, they they get over it. They look to the future. They're looking at this cosmic egg. They're seeing the potential. Seeing the potential, seeing the potential. So this person also has, has the Seven of Cups. Now the Seven of Cups can talk about confusion. Having a lot of offers. Having a lot of choices. Um not knowing which way to turn, not knowing which that which action to take. Um, there's an indecision um, here that is caused by having too many options. But the nice thing about this card um, is that if you turn it, uh, the moon indicates secrets, um, fear, confusion, not seeing things clearly. But if you turn it, um, the sun is shining and there's one clear choice. So I feel like this person at the moment, it could be that they're getting over something, uh, some kind of past disappointment where the reassessing, there's a lot of cups here. They could be reassessing past relationships um, and seeing that they've, um, you know, they've not been treated fairly in relationships as well. It's like this person is very similar to you in that. Um, so they're perhaps, yeah, the scene where, They've reassessed relationships in their life that didn't work out. Um, and it's at the moment, there's some kind of confusion, but I feel like they're coming to a point of clarity where they'll know that I think possibly, again, it doesn't have to be a romantic interest, but it's somebody who's going to be very important in your life. It's like a soulmate connection coming into you. Uh, they're going to see, though, very clearly that you are the right cup for them. You're their two of cups. Again, it doesn't have to be romantic, but it could definitely be um, a very... A very good soulmate connection uh so yeah and it's a cosmic egg it's like when you're both ready the universe is going to unravel and you're both going to see this very very clearly the potential in this um so tell me about the vow and apocalypsis please tell me about vow and apocalypsis you may not have even met this person yet um the hangman there's that aquarian energy um i was talking about robin hood shooting through yeah, there's some kind of delay, there's some kind of hold up. It could be COVID, right? Stopping you from moving. Uh, the hangman talks about seeing things from a different perspective. Um, I'm seeing it as I'm seeing it as guarded energy. Um, but I'm gonna get to that in a second. So the hangman can talk about delays, hold ups, but the purpose of the delay or the hold up is to be able to get you to take a pause and to reassess and look at things from a different perspective. You had the butterfly last week um, and it sort of looks a bit like a chrysalis to me. So it's taking time to heal. So there's some kind of like, it feels like uh, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse is like um, bad luck, bad luck, some kind of bad luck coming in. Uh, and again, it could be bad luck that comes in over and over and again. Um, but it could be that you're generating bad karma because you're staying in a situation that's run its course. Um, or there's some kind of hold up here, like the wheels all tangled. Um, 
that's causing you to move into this reassessment kind of unfurling energy now what the other thing that I was getting was like Batman <laughs> so Batman's wings are um they're almost like his shield they're bulletproof so you have that bulletproof song so it's almost like shielding yourself not revealing everything because because the other imagery that I was getting was like arms open wide bearing your chest saying like take your aim take your best shot you know hit me with your best shot so it's almost like the preparation for this the the shieldedness while you almost like while you grow it's like while you're in that cocoon you're vulnerable so there's a sense of divine timing with the wheel of fortune here where there's been some kind of delay some kind of hold up to get you into this energy of like being in the cocoon dealing with something i feel emotionally that makes you weak because you're going to emerge from this not even as a butterfly you're going to emerge as a phoenix um like this card over here you yeah, strong and healed and with the strength to fly higher than you've ever flown before um look this white white bird here white bird here uh, so the white birds i think are even more symbolic than the phoenix and the, the owl's white on that card as well uh, there's um the ten of swords i'm going to show you it's a bit gross this card the ten of swords here this is a painful ending and it is an ending so we've had a lot of um like the ending cards in reverse but this is like it's time to make the cut, it's time to make the change, it's time for something to end, but it's painful. Um, tell me more, whoa, immediately, tell me more about, whoa, <laughs> about um, Libra. So you could have a uh, cancer placement here, uh, the high priestess there as well. Yeah, so the high priestess talks about you using your intuition, uh, becoming very intuitively strong. Uh, the Interestingly, the high priest priestess can often be mute. She knows things, but she doesn't speak. But I feel like the time to speak is coming up for you now with all those swords raised. Uh, the chariot card talks about taking action, making a decision, bringing uh, two sides into balance and being able to take action forwards. It's kind of, I can show you the world as well, right? Jasmine on that um, thing there. Um, and then the Three of Cups is celebration and also soulmates. Uh, it's kind of like the Mad Hatter's Tea Party too I'm seeing today. So intuitively knowing that you need to take action intuitively knowing that you need to move um towards connections that feel like they are your soul tribe okay tell me about the person that libra is going to meet on their journey tell me about the person that libra is going to meet on their journey uh which way please yeah this is this is um absolutely look at all the cups this is a, an emotional connection for you uh it's um Somebody who's going to come in. The Ace of Cups, again, like the Ace of Pentacles, is potential. So again, it could be a very good friend. It could be somebody that you work with very well. It could be a love offer. Um, there is an emotional offer here. The Ace of Cups is actually um, a relationship that's been a divine gift to you. So like this person may not be seeing it yet. You may not even know each other yet. Um, they could be getting over something. They could be getting over relationships that hurt them. But the Cosmic Egg is this ace of cups it's look at it as well the nice thing about this is like it it's like she's been frozen it's like she's been frozen and um and she's becoming she's becoming unfrozen uh emotionally unfrozen so this person's warming up they've i feel like they they had heartache they became emotionally frozen i think you've done the same thing almost um and now they're warming up and it's going to be the connection between you that really kind of brings in a huge amount of expansion and potential here. Uh, so what's the, what's Libra's journey then? Tell me more about Libra's fairy tale, please. Uh, the Queen of Swords. There you are. The Queen of Swords tried to hide. Uh, yeah, it's something about an ending. Look, the death card. Death card, apocalypsis. Something's meant to end. <laughs> Show me the Six of Swords. Yeah, something's meant to end and you're meant to move on from it. Um, but the Queen of Swords was hiding. She's hiding this truth. She knows it. So the, the I can't really show you. It's, it's, but I'll try and show you what it was doing. Like, I kept putting this card down. It kept... There you go. Can you see it moving by itself? It keeps sliding off. It wants me to take it. It's want, it wants me to take the Six of Swords. Six of Swords about uh, leaving behind choppy waters, uh, moving on to a better situation. Uh, she's not communicating right now. She's But she's... It's like she's listening to the sword. It's like the sword's humming. She's waiting for direction. She's waiting. She's waiting to take action. She's. Yeah. 
feel like something to do with timing here with the Wheel of Fortune. Then, yeah, the death on the underlying there. What's underneath that? The world, yeah. The world talks about completion. Um, learning everything you can from a situation. Learning all lessons you can in the situation. And it comes before the full energy. Uh, you le you need to... Your, your lesson that you're learning is learning how to let go. Queen of Wands there. I didn't ask a question, but I'll just show you that the Queen of Wands is showing. Uh, she's very powerful. She takes action. Uh, so tell me more about uh, Libra then, please. Tell me more about Libra. Who is Libra in their own fairy tale story? Whoa, okay. Which one do you want me to take? That one. Okay. Uh, Queen of Voices. There you are again. Let's Let's have a quick look at what these are. Queen of Voices, that's the Queen of Swords. Again, you keep showing us the Queen of Swords. Um, it is your card, it is your energy. Uh, somebody who is clear, authentic, honest, respects honesty, wants people to communicate openly and honestly, um, can cut things out and take action when she needs to. It's like you become the Ice Queen sometimes. It's like uh, people say about Libras, when they... <sighs> Libra, when they're in love, um, is a very, very... And again, it it's, can talk about friendships. Um, when they feel like they're in those Two of Cups connections where um, there's equal give and take, where things are going good, uh, Libra is very loving, very, very um, affectionate. Um, when Libra's hurt, um, because of the Queen of Swords, um, again, depending on all, all the different placements that are in your chart, right? But Libra and energy on its own, w when it's good, they will shower someone with affection. When it's bad, the the sword the sword comes down and Libra go, goes cold. They withdraw. So when Libra's exiting a situation, there's a withdrawal of affection. Uh, it's like I'm not investing my love into this situation anymore because I've been hurt. So it's it's it, the Libra goes cold. Um, four of materials again, something that you're tied to, something that you're clinging on to. You're guarded, or you're saving money. Uh, being a bit of a Scrooge McDuck, possibly. The Devil card is here. The Devil could be chaining you to something. I feel like that contract, uh, the commitment, the vow, uh, responsibilities you could be chained to, uh, keeping you stuck. Standing up for yourself there with the seven of inspiration. That is, um, yeah, seven of wands is standing up for yourself, um, getting the higher ground. Page of voices that so you could be doing some research, some spying. You could be learning, uh, intellectually learning something from a situation. And there's the two of cups. That's what you want, right? You want your two of cups. You want somebody who is your equal, who treats you fairly, who's open and honest. The fool. You're going to take a leap of faith towards something there because the fool comes after the endings but what's the card that's fallen out for you here the hang muse yeah the hangman you're waiting for the right time here look at all the yellow as well the yellow is really standing out to me on that vow and this hang muse here so again uh that i kind of hold up seeing things from a different perspective um i feel like they were trying to give me a song there but i didn't quite get it um <clears throat> But they just show me the five of voices, which talks about mental conflict or literal arguments, um, people, the harsh words. Um, tell me more about this person that Libra is going to connect with. How will Libra recognize this person? How will Libra know who this person is? Tell me about this person. How will Libra know who this person is? Night of emotions. This person is probably going to communicate with that ace of cups they're probably going to come towards you and i feel like you sat there waiting for somebody to come towards you but this is someone rushing in with a lot of love it's like this person could rush in and read you a poem right um which way please i think this is up oh. um there's some kind of maturity this person's been doing something um where they're becoming more emotionally mature. Uh, sometimes the page of emotions can symbolize a false apology, so just be careful. But I feel like with these two cards, it's somebody who's maturing from a page into a knight. Uh, so it's somebody who, um, the page of emotions is kind of like student energy. You can see like the hearts opening up, shining that light. Um, something here with like um, some kind of portal. I don't know. 
Thank you. Just checking which way these wanted to go. Nine of materials. This is somebody who is very independent. Um, really good on their own. They know how to they know how to handle things on a tangible, practical level. Um, this is not somebody who's conflicted. Um, they they could have been in a period where they couldn't really see things very clearly. They but this person, if they follow the heart, not sure. Ultimately, they're coming through as the night of emotions, though, which is coming forward emotionally. They could have been quite closed emotionally. Again, they could have been focusing on work. Um, not really seeing things very clearly there. Um, being at a bit of a crossroads. They, they could have blocked you. This could be somebody who literally blocked you on social media at some point. Uh, but they're unblocking now. They're coming out of a period or they, they're working their way out of a period where they've been very confused emotionally. Uh, so they're maturing. Um, you're coming into emperor energy um, yeah you're really powering up here you're taking control of your own life it's like Libra doesn't need anyone else the magician yeah you can make things happen on your own here um you're coming into a very powerful energy. Let's read the Emperor card. I want to read the Knight of Emotions as well. Again, so you can kind of spot this person when they come in. Um, this can be talking about fantasy. This could be somebody who's coming out of some sort of fantasy. Um, some kind of immaturity. But they're actually going to start taking steps. Oh, I need to stop and restart. Okay, here we go. So this person, the Knight of Emotions, a brewing romantic heart, dating, new love, absolutely with the Ace of Cups, uh, a happy flirtation, wearing your heart on your sleeve, loving the idea of being in love, the thrill of the chase, going for it, the buzz of fresh and new. Prompt, the honesty of puddles. He stomps and jumps and plays in the water of his heart, so joyous he is with this fresh new connection. Oh, the romantic notion. Bringing to mind this pairing for two takes energy levels up so high that there's nothing to do but just joyously romp, romp in the fresh rainwater. Sometimes you'll find him kicking like, like this in the heat of passion or when he's overtaken by a jealous streak. But today this night of emotions is full of joy. This nautilus shell rises in the sky, lighting the afternoon and gently nudging all things to grow and shift as creation wills it. It reminds everyone beneath its bright love that nature's only option is to grow or to decay. And by choosing to grow, by choosing to put energy into partnerships and into passions, we consciously expand their energy. What connections are you nurturing today? Excitement kicks and like a prince, a show, display, affection. Emotion drips, a charming rinse, now go, display, intention. Could be Sagittarius, could be a water sign. There's a huge amount of cups here, but it doesn't have to be. Like you, it, You've got everything except for ones here. Um, so let's read the Emperor. I love the idea of that excitement, right? Okay, so you're going into this emperor energy. Success and structure, leadership, the divine masculine. <laughs> you, you're becoming the divine masculine Libra. Uh, planning and delivering, building and expanding an empire, legacy, a business person, a visionary, a provider, the time for strategic thinking. Prompt, bedrock of stat strategy. She strums her fingers. Oh my God, it looks like she's like literally playing that sword. You may play like a harp or something, I don't know. Um... She strums her fingers and sends a quartet of Boralis strings out into the sky, a simple joy but one that she happily gifts the people below. The lights serve as a reminder that there is a symphony of light around them, a bigger plan that's not always evident from every vantage point. She steps onto the solid landscape with all her strength and harmonic leadership that a powerful emperor, emperor muse can bestow, sharing her secrets of su success with you. Lead confidently, graciously, empower those around you to do their very best work. Be a guardian, a provider, a steward. Revisit how you care and provide for yourself and for others. 
and then her heart lights up when she sees her, the happy earthly hums from the people below. The glow of contented dreams warms the top of the mountains, and peace fills the valley below as they realise that they are protected, fostered and safe. Authority, stability, things these provide. Control vision now and claim your lead. Protect and feed your goal. So, yeah, you're very strong, Libra. It's like, or, or you will be, right? This is your journey, right? So all the challenges you face, all the times you have to stand up to authority, teaches you to be a better leader yourself in something. Teaches you how to take control. This could be a child, like you nurturing a child. It's This energy is more immature than your energy at the moment. Um, and you've got that nurturing there on this Queen of Pentacles, and this is coming through as your energy today. Not typically, it's an earth sign energy, but you are showing as this um, nurturing person. Like You're showing as like this Empress, right? The Empress is uh, somebody who is... In control, you've got the Empress and the Emperor now. You, somebody who's in control, um, in control of the situation, very calm, very stable, very balanced, um, and they, um, you, you see very clearly, but you want things to be fair, you want things to be equal, and you want to nurture, you want to love. The whole purpose of Libra is that you want to have somewhere that you can pour your love into, or something that you can pour your love into. You want to create... Um, people around you want the situation around you to be in harmony so if you were to be a boss you'd want to make sure that everybody was nurtured in the job that everybody was happy that everybody was getting along that the conflicts were resolved uh, you would want to make sure if you were head of a family you'd want to make sure that um, everybody knew how to resolve arguments that everybody knew how to um, how to work in harmony with each other so you're leading by example i feel right i'm about to run out of time best of luck with that Libra. very interesting reading uh do take care and i will see you again